Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Tuesday, August 6th, 2019 Market Watchers Live show with your hosts, Tom Boley and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. Well, taking a look at the market action today, I guess on the one hand, we've got positive action. On the other, it's not that convincing to me. Uh, we got the Dow Jones Industrial Average currently up 123 points, the S&P 500 up 16, the NASDAQ up 55, but you can see it is below the open. So it gapped up so far, though, selling off from the open, which is consistent with what we've seen the last four days and five of the last six. Russell 2000 also struggling here, currently up just one point after being up much more earlier today. 10-year Treasury yield uh, is up about one basis point, but still way down at 1.74%, a far cry from where we were one week ago. The uh, volatility index after shooting up to about 25, uh, 25 level has been kind of a key area of resistance on the VIX where we tend to put bottoms in. If we go back through that 25 level, I think that's probably painting a picture of some additional panic and maybe a push back down to that June low on the S&P, something to keep in, uh, in mind. The uh, XLC, Communication Services, outperforming today on a relative basis along with technology. Both of these groups hit really hard yesterday, though, so a little bit of maybe bounce. We'll see whether or not it sticks into the close. Uh, not bouncing today is energy. Energy also been under pressure the last four days, and it continues today down uh, roughly three quarters of 1%. Materials also struggling to the downside for the fifth straight day. Aerospace having a good day today. Computer hardware not really having a huge day. I just wanted to point out that after the this group lost more than 5% yesterday. It's bouncing, but bouncing up 1% and not being able to trade above the open is not that encouraging after uh, the the, uh, the shellacking that it took yesterday and has taken over the last week or so. Uh, you can see one of the components, oil struggling here, breaking down below the June low. That's not good. Two leaders in the S&P 500 today, both out with stronger than expected earnings, Transdime. Uh, really a big, big performer here. It was up a lot more earlier today, but this is a big breakout on TDG. And then Take-Two Interactive also trying to make a breakout after pulling back the last few days heading into earnings, the stock up almost $10. All right, Aaron, it is another day. I'll tell you, I'm not impressed overall with the rebound, although we are green. I guess I should be happy with that. <laughs> exactly. We are seeing green on that uh, market summary, uh, except for the TSX. TSX is down almost one and a half percent today. Yeah, it's been kind of a, a strange market. I mean, I was looking at a, a number of the international markets and um, the German DAX, which is as closely tied based on the correlation indicator. Um, it is as closely tied to the S&P 500 as any uh, global index, at least any that I've found. And the DAX had been down and was testing a multi-month low yesterday and then this morning was actually bouncing off of it. So that's going to be kind of interesting to watch too, because if we get a breakdown in the DAX, which tends to correlate pretty strongly with the S&P 500, I think that might be a little bit of a signal that, hey, we're not quite done yet with the selling. So yes. anyway, something to watch for sure. I'm ready for the selling to be done. <laughs> oh, me too. I am. <laughs> You know, I would really like to see the Fed just come out and say, you know what, we're here if the market needs us. I And I, some may disagree with me and feel free. Some believe, hey, the Fed needs to stay totally independent and do their thing. I agree with that. But I also think that they have to kind of watch what's going on in the financial markets and be prepared to act based on what they're seeing in the financial markets. And they just haven't been there. And they haven't, I'm not going to get into a long rant again today, but <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been there since December. Let me just say that. Every time the market's gone into one of these tailspins, it's been after the Fed has come out and talked. And that is completely opposite, polar opposite, really, of what we've seen in the past with Bernanke, Fed, and then Yellen led Fed. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yeah, we shall. All right, what we got going today? All right. Well, our upcoming schedule, we have a very special guest tomorrow, and that would be my father, Carl Swenlin. John Murphy, another tech titan, I would say, will be with us on Thursday. The following week, we have Dr. Elder here on Wednesday, and then next Thursday will be Julius de Kempener, Mr. RRG. So pretty good upcoming schedule, I have to say. Today's agenda, 
sector rotation is going to start off everything after our news and headlines. We're going to look at some chart breakdowns. And the 10 and 10, the very first symbol will be Vertex Pharmaceuticals, VRTX. So you'll want to take a look at that one. But let's go ahead and get started. Technical news and headlines. All right. There were really no economic re uh, reports out of significance. So let's just jump right in, take a look at what the 10-year Treasury yield is doing. Yesterday, I gave you an intraday look, just uh, kind of an hourly kind of look back to what's transpired since the Fed meeting. And you can see on this weekly chart, really, it's just this last week plus this week. Um, but this is a longer term view, just so you get some kind of a sense of what's going on. It's five year. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe take it out to 10 years. And so, you know, step back. Let's see what's going on here. We've got a double bottom and major double bottom around that 140, 135 level. We're back down to 174. I'll be honest, I did not see this coming. When we were at three and a quarter, I expected we were in an uptrend. I figured, you know, we were not going to just shoot up to five or six percent, but I did not have any inclination we were going to be jumping back down anywhere near the lows that we saw in 2012 and 2016. But we're really not that far. And when I pulled up this weekly chart for the first time, it was kind of an eye opener. Um, I think that the bond market is absolutely screaming to the Fed that they need to be much more dovish um, and move away from their neutral stance. They did cut rates a quarter basis point recently at their last meeting, but they would not offer up any hope for further rate cuts. I think that's going to change based on what the bond market's telling us, and we'll see. But uh, this has been quite a drop. Almost 50% of the yield has fallen here just in the last eight or 10 months. Uh, yeah, eight to 10 months. That's a pretty st steep fall, meaning a lot of money rotating into treasuries, which by the way, at some point could benefit the stock market by rotating back. But I've talked about that. It sound like a broken record. So I'll, I'll stop right there on that one. Um, let's take a look at earnings reports because we are still getting a lot of earnings reports. I know the bulk of earnings season is behind us, but there are still a lot of companies, key companies that are reporting. Uh, you can see on the screen here, Marriott, not a great report. Uh, they did uh, post revenues that were below expectations. You can see all they did was match their earnings expectation, they guided their fiscal year 19 earnings per share lower. Um, KLA beat, all the rest of the companies here on the screen did beat. Um, after the bell, Walt Disney reporting match group. That's one that's uh, been pretty hot over the last quarter. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of traders interested to see what the news uh, is there. And Microchip, big company in the semiconductor space, and then Wynn Resorts in the gambling area. So numbers still, uh, big reports coming out, and we'll want to keep an eye on those. Let's uh, take a look at some of these earnings reports, and I'm going to start with Marriott. Marriott, uh, you can see, broke down yesterday. Of course, the overall market has been selling off, but Marriott, with its earnings report now, is moving to about a two-and-a-half-month relative low uh, versus the hotels and uh, lodging area. And you can see versus the S&P 500, same thing, about a two-and-a-half-month relative low. And the group overall, I think this is going to be an important level to watch here to see whether or not the group holds up and continues this uptrend. I see a high, there's a low, a higher high, a, a higher low, one more higher high, and right now we really need to hold this higher low to keep this uh, relative uptrend in place. So Marriott uh, hasn't been a great performer of late, but with the group teetering in terms of relative strength, if that breaks down, then I think this could accelerate to the downside. So Marriott, not one of my favorites at this point. KLA 10 core, they matched revenue expectations. They beat on their bottom line pretty easily. I did not see guidance here. Stock had a really nice reaction and went up and almost got out up to the uh, July high. And considering where the market's been the last week, uh, that's saying something. And what it's saying is that you've got one of the best performers in the semiconductor group in KLA 10 core or KLA Corp now, I guess. Uh, but the relative strength here versus semi strong versus the S&P strong. So when the group bounces back, if the market stabilizes, we start seeing a rally, I would expect KLA to be one of those companies that you want to be focusing on. Even though, for me, I'm not going to have it on my strong earnings chart list because they did not beat their revenue estimates, I still think on a relative basis, you know, if you're just looking at technical analysis, I think KLA remains one of the stronger stocks here. Uh, Take-Two Interactive mentioned that this was one of the top performers in the uh, S&P 500 today. You can see the stock has been in a nice uptrend. Right before earnings, we did come down, test the 50-day, and then with the earnings out, 
the company did easily beat the bottom line, 24 cents versus three, volume extremely heavy. And on a relative basis versus the internet group, we are now moving to about a six, seven month relative high, clearing the high that we saw back in June when we were at that market bottom um, and, and the internet bottom. So this is a company that was beginning to show a lot of relative strength back then, and it continues. So take two, definitely uh, a lot of uh, momentum, relative momentum building to the upside. So that's a good thing. BDX, this is Becton Dickinson Company, five days in a row, downside action. Today, earnings came out, revenues were below expectations. The uh, bottom line, slightly better than, expect, than expected, but you can see the weakness. We have not been able to get a breakout um, above the prior highs. Medical supplies have gone up, essentially tested that level. So on a relative basis, Becton Dickinson has not been one of the best stocks. And you can see what appears to be a lot of distribution with heavy volume on the selling. So not one of my favorites there. Duke Energy reported they beat on the top line, beat on the bottom line, and uh, actually just kind of going along for the ride here, uh, maybe even a little bit of underperformance over the longer term. But I would say the last two months, it's just been going along for the ride with the overall group, beginning to show some relative strength. We'll see if that continues. I think this breakout level, relative breakout level versus its peers at about uh, 0.4125 is something to watch. If we get the breakout there, along with an actual price breakout, you can see all of the tops coming in just above $90, between 90 and about 90.75. Um, that's gonna be a level we wanna clear here on Duke Energy, but it has been holding up relative to the S&P because it is in a more defensive area. Transdime, I think this is a really nice looking chart. I know we're way off the earlier high, we'll see how we finish. Obviously, if we uh, print a, uh, a a filled candle and end up failing to hold this breakout at 500 at the close, that would probably be a pretty um, weak signal. I don't think it's gonna happen though. This is a stock that already was outperforming the aerospace group and now just added to its relative strength. Aerospace, one of the stronger areas in the market today. And you can see it bouncing off absolute support here around the 1600 level. So continued strength in aerospace, I think would lead to higher prices in Transdime. EVER, this is uh, an internet stock, EverQuote, a uh, huge move here. The stock up 45% today, uh, six bucks, uh, but 45%, that's huge. Look at the volume coming in. This is gonna be like an un unlike anything this stock has seen in the past year, and the relative strength is off the charts. If there's one word of caution, obviously it's up 44%, so I'd prefer waiting to get a little bit of a pullback. But uh, when, the, when there's no news out there, uh, you got to be careful because volume here can be somewhat light at times. Uh, another company that I had talked about quite a bit was my setup a couple weeks ago. They reported earnings. Huge gap up today. This is Digital Turbine. Easy beat on the top line, easy beat on the bottom line. They guided their quarter two revenues higher. Gapped up to $6 at the open. Traded all the way down to 503 and now back to 539 This is one that I talked about having such great relative strength. I think this one continues to perform very well. And yeah, there was a little gap up, market makers probably doing, doing their thing today, but I believe this is a stock that goes higher in time. Um, and then maybe one last one here, this is um, SERV, which is Service Master. Um, and you can see this one trying to make a breakout as well. And on a relative basis, it had been struggling the last three months, but getting a big boost with its earnings report, they did come out, beat top line, bottom line, and they guided their fiscal year 19 revenues higher. So a close up closer to the top of today's range would be much more bullish than leaving that long tail up there. So it'll be one worth watching into the close. All right, uh, one last thing I wanted to point out here is if we go back to the dashboard, um, you will see the scooter movers and TDG, which I talked about and take two, which I talked about, two big movers on the large cap. But I'm actually gonna focus on CFX here on the mid cap. Sometimes these scooter movers can give you an idea of a stock that's really on the move, that's doing something that you really wanna be aware of. And other times it's just a dud. And today, in my opinion, it's just a dud. So when we pull up the chart here, here's the scooter absolutely taking a huge move to the upside. So it's one to check out. But when I look at the chart, I really don't see a whole lot here. I see it. You know, mostly moving sideways, moving up, testing 
moving averages, which really don't matter because we just keep going up and down below. There's no trend in play. So yes, it's a big scooter mover, but when you look down at the chart, there's really nothing that gets me excited. So not all of these scooter movers are going to be stocks that I would be interested in trading. And for that reason, that's your scooter mover of the day. All right, time for some upgrades and downgrades real quick here. All right, first one up is AIV, Apartment Investment Management. It was upgraded today by Misuho from a neutral to a buy. They have a price target of $55 now. And I was taking a peek at this chart, and I think it's very interesting. It's sitting on, I would say, some interesting support just around that 200-day EMA, as well as the bottom and tops back here from uh, January, February, and then like that, like I was saying, the bottom back here in April. I think it could be in an interesting place. It did bounce and it is starting to head back up. I'd like to see it uh, beat out this declining tops trend line, however. Uh, that would give me a signal that uh, it might be an interesting buy. Notice the scooter is improving as well. Ford was upgraded today from an equal weight to an overweight. They have raised their target from $10 all the way up to $12. So let's bring that down. So they're looking for a pretty nice move here. Let's uh, make this look at it matches right up there with the 2018 high. So that's what they're looking for on Ford. Uh, I think that's a little bit on the um, uh, optimistic side. I'm seeing a possible double top here and it would have executed with yesterday's move. And that could take you down, well, goodness, the length of that pattern. I could see it coming down to that $8 range. So I'd be a little careful on this particular upgrade. NOC Northrop Grumman was upgraded today from a equal weight to an overweight. And they have moved their price target up to 418. So we're looking at definitely a move uh, that they're looking for at least above the January uh, I'm sorry, the first part of 2018, that's what they're looking for as far as a target. You can see right now overhead resistance. We ended up making it above this top right here, but it failed and now it's testing it again as overhead resistance. We'll have to see if it can beat it out, but you've got a PMO that is on the move to the upside. But this bud is apparently not for you because UBS has downgraded it from a buy to a neutral. They did not give us any kind of a price target. I'm just looking at this um, rising bottoms trend line. You know, you're getting kind of a, a bugle look here. These are uh, broadening patterns. I don't like those. They really, uh, they're just very uh, unpredictable and they tend to break down rather than up. And if you do a little bit of a shorter term rising bottom sign, we are looking at a possible wedge here. So uh, Bud is a downgrade. I can kind of see the danger there. You can also see that PMO is turning over. CLSA uh, upgraded a C limited from a buy to an outperform. They did not give a price target. It is sitting here on that 50 day EMA and looks like it's trying to bounce up, but I'm not liking the way the momentum is shifted here but I don't know that it, it's too bad there as far as the um, downgrade goes. Trex company was downgraded today by, from a buy to a neutral and their new price target is $84. So it looks like right about there, grab that, there we go. So they're looking at a move to test um, that uh, high that we just got uh, recently here at the end of July. Uh, I. You know, I'm surprised they didn't move it up to this kind of a price target, but you know, it is a downgrade. Uh, so we'll have to see what they're going to get from that. But it's a neutral, so that's why the price target's a little bit higher. That's all I have for your upgrades and downgrades. And here you go with our list. And those are the ones I did not cover, but uh, you have those to take a look at later. All right, it is time <clears throat> for the sector rotation segment. And I'm going to start it off today. I know you have some interesting ones to look at too, but let me get uh, shared here. So I thought that for sector rotation, I would go into the sector RRG. So if I go down to our tools here under charting tools, uh, RRG charts. So I'm just going to go right here and it automatically opens you up on to some of the major indexes. 
but I want to look at just the uh, sector ETFs. And this will give us a really good uh, sense of where all of the, uh, let's make this a little bigger too, where this rotation is going. Now, a lot of you may not be totally familiar with sector rotation, but what we look for are the defensive groups, uh, three of which are pretty much up here, healthcare materials, uh, more of a neutral group, I'd say, but uh, you've got financials, comp services, discretionary, those are in your more aggressive areas. So as we're looking at that RRG, remember you wanna look for a Northeast heading. I like this, uh, the fact discretionary is looking like it's going to make a little bit of an improvement here. And what is losing uh, ground here in the intermediate term? As far as RRG is XLU and XLP. Those look like, you know, they are leading, but they are starting to head downward toward weakening. Uh, XLC looks like it's wanting to improve. XLE still lagging, uh, trying to get to the improving section there. And notice healthcare, it was improving. It's starting to turn back down and not toward leading necessarily. So let's go ahead. The other thing that I wanted to look at was the sector candle glance. So you're getting a feel right now for what's going on with these sectors. You can, of course, go to your sector summary, and this tells you what's happening today, what's been happening in the past month. And as you can see, what has been leading this month are all of the defensive sectors. So uh, that's giving us a little bit of concern. I would say we're, we're still starting to see some decline there. Let's go ahead and look at that sector candle glance. And I have the candle glance in my style. Just save the chart style as candle glance, and then you can have exactly uh, whatever you want. So looking at this and just the PMOs in general, they are all in decline. So remember, uh, S XLP looked fairly good, but you know, when I look at the chart, you know, notice that the PMO has certainly been in decline. So. Uh, it was an it's an intermediate term look on the RRG, and you know usually it goes in time with what kind of signals you have. Uh, I notice it generally moves in time with the 20 and 50 day EMAs, and those are in decline. Uh, so XLP, XLU, where is XLU? Have been leading right now, and XLV real estate as well. But you can see leading doesn't mean doing well uh, necessarily. Uh, what I would be watching for uh, is you've got this P these PMOs on sell signals, but they're still above the zero line. What we really want to see is those to turn up above the zero line that start picking up some positive momentum before they go negative. Uh, so that's what we're we'll watching for. Currently, though, I have to say, as far as my candle glance goes, you know, none of the sectors look that great as far as the PMO. Uh, I think energy is interesting because we are getting ready. Um, we've, we're testing the support level. It has failed, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens if we can get a bounce here on energy. And I'm noticing with materials as well, you can see that $55 range, that would be your next area, pretty important support. But all of these, every single one of them have lost the 50-day EMA, except for real estate, it seems to have managed to grab it. So that seems to be where you're going to look for some strength. And that's what I had for sector rotation. What do you have, Praytel? All right. Um, well, I've got a, I wanted to just kind of show, um, First of all, the S&P 500, because we get so tied up sometimes in this, um, you know, vacuum when the market, uh, you know, has these these sell offs. And we saw one pretty significant one back in uh, January of 2018 um, and in really into the, throughout that fourth quarter, first quarter, excuse me. And then the fourth quarter picked up even more. And then we saw that big pullback in May. And now here we go again. Um you know, I'll just say, I know you did point out that the defensive groups have led over the last month, but that normally happens when we pull back. I get more concerned when we're actually breaking out and defensive groups are leading because that tells me that the market, even though it's going higher, is turning more defensive. I think that could be a really big warning sign. But I think if, you, if we take a step back and look at what's going on in the market, I think when you connect the peaks of this bull market right here, which I did, and I take that exact line, and you can do that simply when you go in here to the annotate. I can take this line right here, and I can hit on a Mac, the command and the left, 
uh, clicker and I can drag it. And you see how that line basically, let me see if I can grab it there. See how that line basically just lines perfectly with those lows? That's called a channel. I mean, if you can get major tops and major bottoms to line up and they're using the exact same slope, that's a channel. And the S&P 500 has been channeling higher since the beginning of this bull market back in 2009. These major lows that you see usually form with extreme sentiment readings. Volatility, you know, 35 to 40. Um, equity only put call ratio, maybe a five day moving average close to one, you know, 0 0.90 or something. That's when you get these major uh, moves to the downside. What we saw in May, while it was really scary at the time, really was just a normal pullback. I mean, the market's not going to go up every day. We'd like to think it's going to, but it's not. We got spoiled a little bit 2017. This period right here was the least volatile period in our history because we never saw a 3% pullback in the S&P 500. So what we've run into the last 18 months is just a lot of volatility, but really not any change in the overall direction of the market, which in my opinion remains higher. Now, as we move down, could we go down and test that, you know, the double bottom that we saw earlier in 2019, around 27, 25? Absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, look at the long term. We're going to go through periods where we go sideways, and then we're going to go through periods where we accelerate back to the upside. So clearly, we could go back down to the 2700 level. If we break that, I think that there's a possibility. First of all, we're going to jump off the charts in terms of the VIX and the equity only put call ratio. Everybody will be thrown in the kitchen sink. But I don't believe we're going to lose this trend line support. And I think this is going to hold going forward. So if we get through this level, I am not going to be looking for that fourth quarter 2018 low to be reached. If we get down there, I think the market's got a lot of problems and probably will be in the a throes of a, of a bear market, which I do not believe we're in. So I would be watching short term just to see if we get back down to this level. So when I look at the sectors, what I try to do is follow those aggressive groups because by default, if I'm following the aggressive groups, I know what the defensive groups are doing. If the, aggress if the aggressive groups are going up on a relative basis to the S&P 500, then the defensive groups have to be going down. I mean, that's just the way it works. So taking a look at what's going on here, you can see here's the channel on the S&P 500 that I just drew on the other chart for the last 10 years. And I want you to look at what the aggressive groups are doing relative to the S&P 500, not whether they're going up or down, because to me, that's not really, it's important, but in a bull market, everything goes up. That's what you want to see, wide participation. But the rotation, the sector rotation is really important because as long as money on a relative basis continues to rotate into aggressive groups, the market is being extremely bullish in terms of expecting those high growth companies to lead. It's when Wall Street begins to think, well, maybe we've topped in earnings growth. Um, when you start to see the market go higher and some of these aggressive groups really begin to lag badly, um, and you're going to see it on the charts. It's not going to be one little line. Uh, you know, you can't lead every day. But looking at these charts, I think you can see that we have a really nice uptrend. Even though XLI and XLF went through uh, 18 months of downtrending, I think the overall uptrend remains in play. When you look at the XLY, it had a two-year period where it was downtrending, but then it rotates back. I expect in time we're going to see these two rotate back as well. My point here is that we still have long-term uptrends in terms of relative strength within the aggressive groups. And yes, this past week's been awful. Yes, May was bad. Yes, the fourth quarter of last year was bad. First quarter of 2018 was bad. All of it is within the confines of this long-term secular bull market, which I think remains in play. So there is the sector rotation summary, what Aaron went over and what I went over. We will be right back. Um, in just a moment with uh, chart breakdowns.
right, it is time for some chart breakdowns. Normally we do chart breakouts, but uh, with the way the market has been acting as of late, we thought we would look at some of the more major uh, breakdowns that we're seeing in the market currently. So I sat down and I wanted to figure out a scan that would help me find those breakdowns. Uh, I ended up creating this one this morning. I love my scans. I just have so much fun with them. So anyway, what I did is I wanted to look at the NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500. When I do that, it does tend to help me uh, weed out you know, the penny stocks, the ones from exchanges that I'm not interested in. Uh, it, and really, this is these are the major ones that we do tend to trade. So I thought I would look at what's breaking down in the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. So I wanted a stock with some pretty decent volume as of late. I wanted to find a daily, the 50-day EMA, um, find out what has closed today or what is cro crossing below uh, the 50-day EMA currently. And yesterday's low, I want it to be above the 50-day EMA. So I wanted it to be trading completely above the 50-day e EMA yesterday, but now it is trading below it. So that is uh, considered a breakdown. And I know Mary Ellen and I talk about on Chartwise Women, we, we use the 50-day simple moving average, but it's a similar situation. When you see a price breakdown below that, that is usually your cue um, to either reevaluate, uh, take some profit or sell. So that's what I wanted to look at. I ended up with, uh, I think about 40 to look at on that scan. And these were the ones I thought were especially interesting as far as breakdowns go. And so I'm gonna start with Dean Foods, a pretty obvious breakdown going on here. Let me go ahead and make this more of a, a six month uh, chart just so we can get a better look at what's going on here. So you can see we are breaking down. We broke down below the 50-day EMA. We're trading completely below it right now with that gap down. I think the interesting point to make, and actually I wanna take this volume uh, out because it is too dark. Let's make it op more opaque so I can see the price charts here. There we go, it's a little bit better. So I'm gonna just annotate real quick. I'm looking at, the bottom here, uh, support is coming in. It's very low, of course. This is a very low price stock, so just keep that in mind. But it is in the consumer staples area. Uh, I It is a breakdown below that 50. That worries me. Uh, so just something to keep an eye on. And of course, the PMO has turned down. So uh, that's what I had on that one. Let's go ahead and move over to the next one I'm looking at is Everbridge. And this is a software company. Uh, you can see a really nice scooter, but we're getting a, a big breakdown. Of course, it, it was vulnerable and hit that low. It had the 50-day EMA. It was holding it. But today, we have lost that. Where is the uh, next area of uh, support? I would say back down here, just below 75. Uh, you could hope that it holds that 77 area, but I would be looking at that 200-day EMA and that $75 level as hopeful support, but we don't trade on hope, do we? So that was another breakdown that I was thinking was interesting. You can see right now very much of a struggle for Iovance Biotherapeutics. Uh, struggling right there at that 50-day EMA. It is trading um, below it right now. It looks like, yes, currently trading below it. We had already some interesting information here just from the PMO back here. We got the sell signal and it started to, to cruise lower and prices were moving lower. I think this was our uh, the signal, you know, really especially back here when we lost that support at $23. That was a problem. All right, Perigo was another one. You can see breakdown below that 50-day EMA in conjunction with a PMO sell signal, looks like that came in yesterday. Lost short-term support here at uh, price lows and now has lost it at the 50-day EMA. And this is one thing I am getting a little bit concerned about. You know, we were moving higher, making new all-time highs, but more and more stocks in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, they were breaking down below their 20 and 50 day EMAs. And you don't want to see an increase in that. Uh, that's, that's a problem to hold up a market. And so it, it isn't surprising to me that we're having this 
uh, difficulty. You can see lows right here, just above 650 for TiVo Corporation. And I would be looking for a test down there after losing both the 20 and 50 day EMA. It looks like we had just started to peak here. We got the 20, 50 day positive crossover and then mm, not so great. Toyota Motor Company, uh, not only is it losing its 50 day EMA here, but we are also losing um, support right up here at these short-term tops that we had back in June. Uh, if you wanna go down a little bit further, you can look at some possible support here at about 124, lines up with the top back here from January and some of these lows back here in June. Uh, I would be more concerned with uh, support all the way down here at these lows, just given the fact we are losing so much right now, five, 10, 20 day negative crossover. And like I said, anytime you start seeing price dip below 50 day simple moving averages or 50 day uh, EMAs, exponential moving averages, that's usually your cue that something uh, really bad is gonna get ready to happen here. All right, I'm not gonna save that. Next up is Virtue Financial. And this one, you know, it struggled here at, this is the only one I would say that I think has some potential here, despite the breakdown. Uh, we lost, we managed to get above resistance here, that short-term resistance, but then failed yet again. We've been in mostly a trading range here, and you can see that was a trading range earlier as well. Um, I think you could make a case right now for a double bottom maybe, uh, kind of a complex one setting up here, but we did have failure at that confirmation line. We lost the 50-day uh, EMA today, but we were still above that 20. So I think there is still some hope here. And then of course you can see that the PMO is about ready to hit zero, but we did lose that 50-day EMA and that's why I consider that a chart breakdown. And finally, the last one I'm gonna look at here. All right. A uh, pretty ugly breakdown on Workhorse Group. Uh, this is a lower uh, price stock, uh, but it does get a lot of volume. So let's go ahead and we'll annotate this one as well. Auto support and resistance. That was your important area of support. And we had breached that uh, only a few days ago, looks like on uh, Friday. We breached it, we held the 50 day EMA though. And we managed to get back up here and trade above the 20. So it looked like there was a bit of hope going on, but today we've got a serious breakdown, not only before below price support, but below that 50 day EMA as well. Notice also you have this uh, lovely PMO top below the signal line, another sign that there's some problems. Uh, you could see that we had a negative divergence going on with the PMO. Let's go ahead and I'll use this trend line with the PMO and with price tops. Uh, a lot of times I don't get overly concerned about these negative divergences, um, mainly because if you start to accelerate at a very um, even rate, uh, you will sometimes see the PMO either move sideways or start to move a bit down. It's nice to see it unwind. However, the fact that we do have that negative divergence, I would be just keeping an eye on it. Uh, if I owned a stock where we're starting to see that loss in momentum for a long time. Uh, you know, if you had gotten in back here and ridden that, that move to the upside and you were watching and seeing that PMO turn down like that, you know, you want to um, have that decline there, uh, not necessarily below the signal line as far as the PMO. So that was giving us some warning as well. And of course that big breakdown here uh, broke down below that rising bottoms trend line earlier. So uh, this one, I'm not so certain about hope uh, as far as what's going on, but I did see, like I said, of those breakdowns, I think Virtue Financial looks like it could have some uh, opportunity here once the market turns around. All right, I am going to look at some relative charts and look at some areas um, and individual stocks that I think could have some problems going forward. I'm going to start with Quest Diagnostics. Um, Quest came out, uh, you can see with the big volume that's earnings related, got the gap up, could not get the breakout. We've had a quadruple top there. Now we're coming back down. This is not light volume. I think that uh, most of what we have seen since that earnings report has been big volume to the downside. 
And I think relatively speaking, uh, if we break, well, on an absolute basis, if we break down and close below 97 and a half, I think that's going to add to some of the erosion we've already seen on a relative basis in DGX. This was a company that was actually outperforming the uh, healthcare providers index. Healthcare providers had not been a very good area of the market in 2019, but this had been one of the better performers. I'm seeing volume pick up. I'm seeing the price start to roll over, and I'm seeing the relative strength beginning to, uh, to to move lower as well. So all of that combined tells me if this stock loses 97 and a half, I would really be careful. I think this is on the verge. I don't know that I would say at this point it's a breakdown, but it certainly is pointing to one. Uh, yesterday's close was a little bit below the one we saw before earnings. And so, and it's really not getting much of a bounce today. So I would be real careful with this one. Um, AEE, this is a defensive stock, uh, Ameren Corp. Um, but it is trying to break down. Uh, and like Aaron said, there's maybe one in her area that I think was uh, she had was holding out hope for. And I think the same thing here. This could be a hammer. We had a big breakdown earlier. Uh, maybe we hold it. The group overall has been pretty strong. You can see on a relative basis, the stock had been strong. Although, look at it now. It is at about a three-month relative low to its peers. Volume is picking up and it has been coming down on that volume. I think this is going to be a really important level. Close below 74, and I think you've got a break down here, one that I would keep a very close eye on. COTY, this one gets a little clearer on the breakdown. Last couple of days, you can see the, the uh, move to the downside, failing to hold this, these prior lows. I think this is one that I had mentioned that may have been a scooter mover a week or so ago. It was the day it was going up, hitting the 20-day. And I remember talking about that, saying we need to get through that 20-day. We failed. And look at what has happened since. It has rolled over. Relative On a relative basis, we are now at about a six-month relative low to its peers and also to the S&P 500. So not only are we seeing the breakdown in price, we're seeing a breakdown in relative strength. Not a good combination. PAYX, paychecks. This one had rolled over, came rolling back to the upside on some pretty good volume end of June, early July. Never could get back to that prior high, though, in July when the market was breaking to all-time highs. And you can kind of see that here on the relative strength versus the S&P 500. So you see it moving up. And if you're only looking at the absolute chart, you're probably not seeing the deterioration that's taking place underneath the surface. This has been a stock that peaked versus software just a couple of months ago and has been moving lower, although it has pulled up, you know, picked up a little bit here recently. I think, though, with this big volume move back to the downside, we're going to want to watch this 80 area. 80 to the downside, it's really going to be hard to paint a positive or bullish picture if you get a close below 80 on paychecks. I think this one's breaking down, but that would be the ultimate confirmation. I'd be careful there. MSCI, this one pains me because it's in my model portfolio. But look at the volume coming in. They actually reported earnings back here where it went up and hit that 20-day. It was up about $7 that day with earnings and then rolled back down. Almost every one of these candles are filled candles, meaning that you're selling off during the day. Today, we're getting almost no bounce back to the upside, 2 bucks after dropping 45 or, well, 35 38 um, Not really a big bounce to the upside. And again, look at that volume. But the most telling thing is look at the stock versus its peers. Now, the, the group has broken out versus the S&P 500, but this stock is breaking down. It was a leader until about two months ago, and now it is all of a sudden started to roll over. And in addition, the volume is picking up. I think that is not a good sign. I think that's telling us that we've got a stock that is no longer a leader in this space, and I would be out of MSCI. Pulte Home and the home building group uh, that's been doing pretty well or okay with uh, lower interest rates, been holding up not bad versus the S&P 500 during this weakness because rates have been dropping. But Pulte is losing a lot of steam versus its peers. And by doing so, also losing versus the S&P 500. Big gap down on heavy volume, went up, tested the moving averages and gap resistance and failed, starting to roll back over. This is starting to look like a stock that I would not want to own. i got to believe there are a lot better stocks in home construction right now than Pulte. And then the last one I have is Ford. Uh, Ford, just with that gap down with earnings, um, I didn't like the way it was acting even before that. You can see Ford versus the autos was moving lower. 
Auto Group was actually advancing from the June low through most of July, and yet Ford could not make a breakout. That was a telling tale. Then you got the big gap down. I think this is confirming that we have a double top in play. I think we're breaking down on Ford, anything close to that 20-day moving average, and I would be out. Here are our chart breakdowns uh, that Aaron and I just went over. You can see we each had quite a few. Give you some ideas. If you're into shorting, maybe you can take a look at some of those. They might appeal to you. I'm not into shorting. I do believe the market will bottom and head back up. And my overall philosophy is not to try to short a secular bull market, which I believe we are in. But we still have breakdowns and stocks, if nothing else, for me, stocks I want to avoid, Aaron. All right. Absolutely. Is, yeah, it is time to get into the 10 in 10. And I know the first stock that we have is Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Yep. Um, yeah, I was looking at this chart and, you know, I mean, when you look at it, it didn't really participate when the market went higher. And it's not really participating when the market's going lower. It's just going sideways. Oh, we don't um, see your screen. Oh, that's probably <laughs> because I didn't share it. You know what? That's what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, VRTX has just been going sideways. Um, I was going to see if I could just paint a picture in everyone's mind. I was going to be really descriptive. <laughs> that's um, it. <laughs> uh, but no, we're going sideways here. So I was just saying back in you know 2019 throughout the rally, you can see that Vertex has not really been doing much. So on a relative basis to the S&P, it was going down. And now we're seeing this weakness in the market and Vertex actually went up and is trying to hold on to gap support here. So we've seen a pop. I would like to see the stock make this relative breakout, number one. Number two, it's got to hold this area on a pullback, this gap support area. We gapped up on big volume, sold off down to about 170. I really don't want to go back down below that level because it hasn't been that great a performer here to begin with. Um, I want to see it hold gap support and take back off to the upside. So that's what I would be looking for. Overall, when I look at this chart, it doesn't excite me. I'd look for something else. All right. The most popular in the chat room, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, Ring Central RNG. Yeah, they actually came out with really nice earnings and pulling back, I think this is an opportunity. I'm going to be looking for stocks like this that show great earnings, uh, great positive reaction. And then when the market just throws the baby out with the bathwater, I look at RNG as being the baby. I mean, it's it's a great looking chart. Sideways consolidation. You could look at this maybe as an inverse head and shoulder. You could look at it maybe as a little cup and handle breakout. The volume strong. Relative strength is off the charts, both versus its peers and the S&P 500. So when the market sells off, these are the types of stocks that I want to be involved with because they're they're relative leaders. They're absolute leaders and relative leaders. I believe when the market rebounds, stocks like this are going to do well. So I like RNG. I guess maybe the area that I would probably watch would be the breakout level, which is around 125. And then also, I think the uh, rising 20-day moving average, we're holding above that so far. And clearly, the, the overall market has not. So that's just another sign that this is an outperformer. I think RNG looks good. All right. Let's see. Let's look at uh, Lockheed Martin, LMT. Yeah, it's in one of my favorite areas, defense, um, and Lockheed Martin had been a pretty good performer. Yeah, it's still holding up really well. Um, defense has held up well. It's actually put in higher lows. Uh, this actually went down maybe and tested those lows, so I'm not sure. Relative strength, yeah, relative strength's come down a little bit, but the overall group, look at defense relative to the S&P. I think you've got a really good group, which is helping Lockheed Martin outperform the S&P. You might not have the best defense stock, but I think it's a pretty good one. And I think part of the reason it's underperforming is that it's sideways consolidating. So unless it breaks price support, I'd be okay holding this one. I would look around that uh, 350 area to be major support. You could go down even a little bit further if you wanted. That's where we broke out. We came back down, tested that area before breaking out again. I'm going to say 340, 350 area. If it breaks down below that and defense stocks are still looking pretty good, I would simply look for another defense stock. If the overall group is looking bad and Lockheed Martin breaks down, then I would just get out of defense altogether. There you go. Uh, next one is a rather new stock, Zoom Video, ZM. Yeah, let's take a look at Zoom. Yeah, when you do technical analysis, I like. I mean, it's a study of price action. So when you get a company that's only been public for three or four months, 
you're not going to get a lot of price action. So it just makes it more difficult to um, really feel comfortable about a an area of support or resistance. But still, we can have fun with it. Take a look. We had a huge gap up with its first uh, public earnings report back in June. It has pulled back to that level. I think you've got gap support there. I'm. It's going to be a volatile stock. I'm going to say 80 to 85 is where I would want to see support hold. The recent high up there around 105 is your resistance. So that's a trading range. I think you can trade it around 80 to 85. But if I did, I'd keep my stop on a close below 85. In this zone here, I think your reward to risk looks pretty good. All right. Uh, what are you thinking about Micron, MU? All right. Well, it had been a relative leader. So that's going to be one thing is throughout all of this selling, is it outperforming the semis? You can see the semis are going down. Yes, uh, it, uh, Micron's going down, but the volume has been lesser than what we saw on the way up. So what's the relative strength look like? It's not bad. It's holding. It's not at the high, but it certainly isn't cratering off of its recent high. So I might look at, say, this relative support line. Um, this is a volatile group, but right there, I think, is a pretty important level. Just like a price chart that goes up and comes down and sets important price support levels, I think when you're looking at relative support, I want to pay attention to those relative price support levels. And so right in here, if it breaks down, it's just telling you that you know over the last month, this is a stock that's beginning to underperform its peers. And if I see something I don't like on the price chart, and I'm also seeing relative weakness, I want to be careful. So I think that that, along with maybe the price support and the 50-day moving average down here, is something I'd watch. Keep in mind also, Micron is in that semi space. And whenever we get into these trade war talks and the fears escalate, this is a group that tends to get hit hard. So there's a little bit of added risk, in my opinion, owning these stocks right now because the focus is on the trade war. Um, I'm okay with it as long as you're willing to take that added risk. All right. Uh, another one that was popular in the chat room was Fluidime, FLDM. I saw this earnings report. It was disgusting. <laughs> I saw the reaction. Uh, and yeah, I'm not going to be a big fan here, I can tell you. And this was a stock, by the way, that was on my model portfolio two months or two quarters ago. It was during this move. Fluidime was one of the best performers. And it's also one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of buying and holding. It would have been easy to say, hey, I got the next... Um, you know, the next big winner here with Fluidime, it was up to $14. Look where it is now. It's five months later, it's cut in half. So many companies do this. They're good for a quarter or two quarters. Their products look good. And then somebody comes out with a better product and all of the momentum that that company has vanishes. And when you look at Fluidime, even though we didn't break down on an absolute basis until this week, look at the relative chart. See that relative weakness? That's why I think it's really important to keep that in mind when you're trading. Again, it, you know, everybody's kind of, I think, programmed to look at the absolute price chart. And as long as your stock is doing okay, it's not breaking down, you want to hold it. But there's a reason a lot of times why these stocks begin to underperform on a relative basis. And in this case, we found out why, unfortunately. A huge gap down with its earnings. It's a stock I wouldn't touch right now. All right. What do you think about Aurora Cannabis, ACB? It's getting a nice breakout today. All right. Well, I'm going to step up the pace here a little bit. Uh, it's breaking out, but it's a shooting star off of uh, uh, that little bit of a move higher the last few days. And what bothers me is just this overall downtrend. I've seen a lot of fa failures in the last four months, the relative weakness here. I'm going to pass because of those two reasons. All right, next one up is AMC Entertainment. I'm seeing a flag formation, uh, which I like. Is it AMC or AMCX? AMC. All right, uh, AMC. Um, it's trying to put in a bottom, uh, maybe a bottom reverse head and shoulder. Um, relative strength starting to pick up, but it's not a great performer. I would just say this, if you're playing this short-term strength, make sure you don't. it doesn't fail. And for me, it'd probably be anything below that left shoulder. So if you go back down below these moving averages, I would get out because of the longer term relative weakness that we've seen. All right. We did talk about Lockheed Martin, but what about Boeing? 
Yeah, I mentioned that the aerospace group was doing pretty well today. Boeing is not part of that. And look at the relative strength. Literally just one ch one line is all I really need to put on this chart. I'll probably put two. But all I need here is Boeing relative to the aerospace group and relative to the S&P and aerospace relative to the S&P. I mean, all three of those, it's hard to get up behind Boeing at this point. Let's see it start to, to turn around and let's see the group begin to turn around. Otherwise, if I'm going to play an aerospace stock, Transdime, something that's actually outperforming would be my choice. All right. And our final one would be Denny's, D-E-N-N. -N. It's been having a nice run. Well, it's in a great area of the market. And notice it's not pulling back with the overall market. So the relative strength has just been accelerating. This is absolutely the type of stock that you want to be in. Um, it, uh, you know, If nothing else, the fact that it is holding up above this gap support with everything that's going on in the market the last five days, and it continues to trade above that level, and the relative strength takes off, is taking off like this, and it's one of the better stocks within the restaurants. And look at what restaurants are doing relative to the S&P. So you got a, late, a leading industry group and one of the best stocks. So I'm a fan. I like Denny's here. All right. And that is the 10 and 10. And here are the symbols that Tom just annotated. Uh, you might want to go back and look at uh, your own and see what you think of those charts based on his annotations. Yep. All and right. Then, I was mm -hmm. just going to say Denny's uh, has the Grand Slam breakfast. So, you know, you can't go wrong there. Yeah. Maybe it'll be a Grand Slam. I don't know. <laughs> Possible. Oh, we'll see. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's look at that poll. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. I did pull up all of those stocks on my candle glance. So uh, I suppose I could share that after we get uh, into What do you think? I mean, we'll go over the charts in just a minute, but what were, what's your choice? I mean, it was crazy. And I never look at the answers. I mean, I don't ever look at what people are doing, um, but Lyft was honestly my number one and number two was win. I, I mean, that they seemed uh, there were a lot of things technically wrong about them. Uh, but I thought, honestly, Lyft was uh, in the worst uh, place for a possible really bad downturn. That was the one I didn't like. Yeah, I think mine was was win. Um, but I agree with you. I don't like Lyft either. And I don't like Monster. Uh, I don't think Monster looks very good on the chart. We'll see. I mean, that's a company that's got a long term track record doing well. So of the three, I think Monster may may be one that comes out. But I wouldn't be surprised to see some weakness in both. Um, win and lift. Um, that probably means everybody should just run out and buy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but what do you think? Was there any? Um, I mean, we probably have about a minute or so. Was there yeah, one? Yeah, let me show you my my charts here, real quick. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the, the twenty and fifty uh, had already had negative crossovers on both lift and Mont uh, and win. Uh, I felt like Win has already lost a lot of its uh, price anyway, and the support is nearby. But Lyft, I see a double top coming up. It did fail at that confirmation line, and it's trying to come back up. Uh, but I think overall, it's probably the most vulnerable for a, a bigger decline than Win because support is fairly close for Win. Yeah, your monster right there also double top breakdown. Yeah, but it's almost like complete, like it almost hit the, well, it looks like it already hit that minimum. Well, I was looking more intermediate term, looking back beginning of June, beginning of July highs and just yes. breaking below that June low. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that literally, you know, that's the only one of the six actually that it's, is trading at a two month low right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, none of, honestly, a lot of these don't look good anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but of the ones that look the worst, there you are. Yep, no doubt. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to take the poll. It's always fun to kind of guess as to what may come out with those earnings reports. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being with us today. Please remember to complete the survey as you exit. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great Tuesday afternoon, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Happy trading.